Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create this very simple and quick project using Python, Tkinter, as well as an external Python library. So this project is a URL shortener. What you will do is pass a very long URL and then you will get your URL shortened. This is pretty common on the internet. Oftentimes there are URLs or links to certain websites that are just way too long. You can then employ a URL shortener service, which will then produce a shortened URL that can redirect to your website and it will just look much shorter and you can share it much more easily. Okay, so this is what we're going to do here. The interface will be built using Tkinter. I'm going to walk you step by step with how we're going to create this interface. Now, while I do have plenty of beginner tutorials for Tkinter, I have a series that is ongoing in which I explain every single type of widget using Tkinter. I'm actually going to start from scratch in this video. So if you are a beginner, you can definitely follow along. The only thing I ask of you is that you have Tkinter installed. I also have a video of that showing you how you can install it. Now, other than that, after we can build the interface, I will show you how you can use this library to actually use and shorten your URLs. So I will walk you through it, how we're going to implement it and how we will use it to shorten these URLs. And yeah, that's really what this project is. Let me actually demo it for you and show you how this is going to work. If I open up my browser, you can see here there's a link to my channel and to the video section of my channel. So if I actually go back and I paste this link right here, you can see that we actually have a pretty long link. You have youtube.com, you have my channel name and you have the videos. So. I'm simply going to press on shorten URL and wait for a tiny URL to get shortened. So the API that we will use in this video is the tiny URL API. This will enable us to shorten these URLs and produce this very small URL. So now that I have a small URL, I can actually copy it and go back to my browser and try it out. So if I paste it here, you can see this redirected me to the very same page that I previously was on. So this tiny URL works. This also works for any browser, any computer. If you try it out, you will definitely head to my channel and to the video section. So this is how this interface will work. Now, without further ado, let's actually get started with building it. So before I forget, I'm using VS Code as usual. You can use any Python text editor or IDE that you like and are comfortable with. Now, the source code will also be linked in the description, so you can also refer to it during the video if you want to actually read the code or copy paste some code snippets as you are building the project on your own. Okay, so some starter code that we see right here on the screen. Let me actually go through it line by line and explain what's going on. Firstly, you need to import Tkinter. Now that's pretty intuitive, so that's really it. Next, you need to create your root window. So tkinter.tk will be the root window. What do we mean by root window? Well, if I actually run it right now, you can see that this creates this blank window right here. And this is my root window. This is the parent widget of all the other widgets in my screen later on. What do I mean by a parent? Think of it as a very large container in which all the other widgets are smaller boxes placed inside of this large container. So it's the parent of everything else. Next thing I do is I will set the root.title. As you can see, I set it to be URL shortener. So here you can see the title of the window is URL shortener, which is what I just specified. Finally, I will set the root.geometry. I will set it to be 300 by 150, which means the width will be 300 and the height will be 150. So this is what you see right here. This is, however, still resizable. So this is not a fixed geometry. You can still resize it. You can do this, um, you can also do this and resize it however you like. But this is sort of the default geometry that when you launch your app, this is what we want it to look like. Finally, you have the root.main loop. The main loop is how Tkinter executes applications. It runs an infinite loop and this loop will continue running so long as your application is being executed. So while this screen, you can see it right here, this main loop is running. When I press on the X and I exit the application, this main loop stops running and Python can stop running as well. So this is how Tkinter works. This is how you set up the most basic application in Tkinter. All right, let me lower this. Let's now actually start by adding the widget. So we want to add the labels, entries, and buttons. So now this is how I would add the widgets to my screen. So I would first define a label. So this label is going to be my long URL label that will say enter a long URL. 
So I use the class tkinter.label, I create an instance of this class and I save it inside a variable. How do I create this class? I have to pass two different arguments. I pass the root. So here the root is the parent. So I'm saying this label, its parent is going to be root. Every widget in tkinter has to have a parent. Therefore, when I assign the root parent to this label, I'm saying this label box exists inside the large container that is the root. Okay, so this is how I'm saying put this label on my screen. Next, I will specify the text. So the text is going to be enter long URL. And in this case, this is going to be the text that is shown on the label. Okay, so this is how you create a basic label in tkinter. Again, I do go more in depth in one of my videos in which I go through labels, buttons and entries in depth and the different properties. But for now, for the most basic label, this is how you create it. I do the same thing by defining the short URL label right here. And this will actually define it and do a tkinter.label same as before, same parent, which is the root. And then the text itself has to be output shortened URL. So I'm telling the user this is where the shortened URL is. Okay, perfect. Next, I'm going to define the um, entries. So here I'm going to say, um, this is the tkinter.entry and the parent is the root. So again, the entry is like this little text box in which you're going to type the URL. I call this one long URL entry and then I call this one short URL entry. And again, we pass the root to this, this parent root to this widget. Okay, so I created these two entries which are the text boxes. Finally, I will define a button. And when I define this button, I will use tkinter.button, create an instance of this class, and then I will have root as the parent again. And the text which is shown on the button is shorten URL. Now let me run it. You can see there's nothing on the screen. Why is that? Well, if you're new to tkinter, there's one thing you should know, and you should take this as sort of, sorry, you should take this as a rule that anytime you want to add any widget to your screen in tkinter, First, you need to create the widget. You have to actually define it the same way we did here with tkinter.label or tkinter.entry. The second step, you have to position it on your screen using either pack, place, or grid. These guys are what we call geometry managers. So they're super important. They enable you to place and organize your widgets on your screen. I have a separate video. I go through them in depth, but for now we're going to use the simplest approach, which is pack. So if I, you can see, I can add this code and here for every single one of these widgets. So you can see long URL label dot pack, long URL entry dot pack. And for all of them, I use dot pack. So dot pack will actually just place them in my screen, center them, and it will just put them in a very nice and centered way. And it will also be responsive. I go in depth again about every single one of the different geometry managers in a separate video and how you can sort of modify them and position things around. But for now, for this tutorial, we only want to place them on the screen. Now, if I run it, you can see that we can actually see the widgets. These guys are the labels. These two are the entries and this is the button. As of now, if I press on the button, nothing really happens. The reason is we haven't assigned any command. The command we're going to assign will be command equals shorten. So what is this command? Essentially, it's a function that will get executed when you run this program. So the way I'm going to do it is simply, I will start by uh, whenever the button is clicked, this is an event. So the event button clicked, when it occurs, I will handle it using this function. We call these callback functions. So this function shorten will get executed when this button is created. Okay, so now I can just come here, I can define uh, shorten. And then what I can do, okay, so I can just print hi. Now, if I run it, let me actually increase this guy, run the app and I press on shorten URL, you can see that high gets printed out in my output. So this is how this command works. When the button is clicked, go ahead and execute the command shorten. Okay, so actually I'm going to remove it. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this following code. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you what is the function, what is the library, sorry, that we're going to download to use this shortener. Okay. So there is a special library that we're going to use to shorten our URLs. This is called PyShorteners and this is the library. 
so you can install it using pip now if you're a beginner usually pip you can use it to install external libraries with python you probably have it if you have python installed um, and you've probably used it at one point or another to, to install any certain library so I, I can copy this and i can go back to vs code and i can just scroll down and open up my terminal now i can paste the pip install uh, paste pip install by shorteners to install this library now if i press enter i wait for it to get installed now in my case i already have it so i will get requirement already satisfied in your case you just have to wait a minute it will get installed it's pretty quick and then you will actually have this library installed okay perfect now i'm just going to close this again and let's actually take a look at this code that i added well, here's what we want to do. We want to shorten our URL from this entry. So we have the long URL in the entry and then we're going to shorten it. Okay, for now, let's actually close this shorten function and take a look at the import. You have to import by shorteners. This is the library we just installed. If you import it, then you can use it. Okay, so the rest of the code, this remains the same. It's untouched. We're actually now modifying the shorten function. Now, what am I going to do? I create an instance of this shortener class. So I say shortener is equal to pi shorteners dot shortener. Okay, so this is a class and we created an instance of it. Now, we will then use tiny URL. So this is here, this tiny URL. So shortener dot tiny URL dot short in order to shorten my URL. So how am I actually using this tiny URL API? Well, this pi shorteners guy, so this library that we saw right here, this is a wrapper to the tiny URL API. It's actually a wrapper to multiple API, uh, sorry, to multiple URL shortening APIs. So, but by default, it uses tiny URL. So what's a wrapper? Think of it as if, well, I can write my code to talk to the tiny URL and uh, send a request and get my output shortened URL. But that's going to be a lot of work. A wrapper API, a wrapper for an API, essentially it will do all the heavy lifting for you and you only have to call it using a simple function through a Python library. This makes it much simpler for beginners and much more straightforward. It does all the heavy lifting for you. Okay, so we do so using simply two lines of code. We say shortener equal pi shorteners dot shortener and then what we do is we just use the shortener dot tiny url dot short okay i'm actually going to clear this stuff in order not to keep this too complicated and let me actually walk you through how we're going to use this so after defining my shortener and using shortener dot tiny url dot short here is where i would pass my long url so if i come back here i have the documentation for the official python standard library so i can just come here copy it and then what I can do is I can go back to my app and this is sorry okay I'm going to close the app I'm just going to paste this here in my code so this is my long URL let me just ignore this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply print short URL so this will print out the shortened URL the shortened URL should redirect me to this link now let's run the code and I can walk you through it step by step so for now, we're not actually using the entries that we have. We're simply using the button. The button will call shorten. Shorten will create all of this stuff related to the shortener library. And then it will just use this URL, which we added in the code ourselves. So let me actually press the button. You can see here we have this printed. We have a tiny URL and this is the small shortened URL. Allow me to copy it, come back here and paste it. So let's go to this URL. And see, it redirects me to the exact same Python standard library documentation. Okay, perfect. So this is now a fully functioning URL shortener. We're using the tiny URL API to actually produce these tiny URL shortened links. You can use this in your browser, test it out, and you can see this will redirect you to the exact same website that I just specified. So now we were able to use this whole API using these short two lines of code with the help of the Pi shorteners library, which is a wrapper. Okay, perfect. Now, one last thing I want to do, well, I actually don't just want to shorten this string. I want to get the string from my um, uh, entry. Okay, so we have the long URL entry. So I will simply say long URL entry dot get. This is how I'm able to get the text in this entry. Now, if I run it, 
if I come back here and let's say I want to shorten this one, the one we have for the installing the library. If I paste the long URL here and I press shorten URL, then we will print out the short one. You can see the short one gets printed out, copy it, test it out. It should work anyways. This will redirect me to the exact same library. Okay, perfect. Now, the final step, rather than have it get printed out here in my output, I want the output to appear here in this entry. The way I'm going to do it is I will say short URL entry, so this one, dot insert. So insert will insert this text into the entry. Then I'll say zero and short URL. What does zero mean? Here I'm saying insert it at index zero, which means insert it at the very start of the entry. In programming, we, in especially Python, you usually start by counting from zero, then zero, one, two, three. So here we're inserting it at index zero, so at the very start of the entry. Let's run it one final time. So let's actually get a new URL. I can come here and get something about uh, built-in functions, okay? So let's actually copy this, come back, paste the long URL here, and I'm going to shorten the URL. This gives me the output here. Okay, so copy it, come back here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it. It should redirect, right, redirect me to the same place. I can paste it in another tab as well, and this should also take me to the built-in functions page. Okay, so that's really it. We were able to build this interface using tkinter and then use this API as well as its wrapper to create the functionality behind the interface. So that's really it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.